USC eight straight wins against the Big Ten, including four straight in BCS bowl games. Can Penn State break those streaks? playing in its first Rose Bowl game since the 94 season. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horwitz, glad to be with you on CBSSports.com, breaking down all the bowl games here on the website. And to help me do that, as he has all season long, we bring in Spencer Tillman from Houston, of course, of CBS Sports. And uh, Spence, when you talk about this game, eight straight wins against the Big Ten, average of 25 points per victory. When you look at Penn State, is there something that would make you think twice about the fact that USC will dominate this game? Because that is the conventional wisdom. Well, you can look a lot, look at a lot of things. I think maybe common opponents. I mean, both of them beat Ohio State. Uh, Penn State beat Oregon State soundly. And uh, when you look at that, I think that's the major evidence to not to discount this Penn State ball club. And again, I know how prolific the defense for uh, USC has been so far this year. Ray Malugan and company, they're, they're outstanding. But don't discount this team. Penn State is motivated right now. Uh, Joe Paw's arm with that new three-year contract. I don't know if he's going to outlive it or not, but you know what? That's got to be special. They're giving him a lot of credits and a lot of props for the job that he's done. If you look at his numbers since 2004, they've actually gone up considerably in the win-loss department after a couple of years of struggling there when they um, uh, struggled to get bowl eligible. But I think Penn State's a, a good team in a good position right now. Nobody expects them to win, Jason. And it is a fantastic matchup between the coaches. Joe Paterno has outlived the decades. Uh, Pete Carroll, yeah. the coach of this decade uh, as we've gone into uh, the new millennium. Uh, Spence, you know, you hit on the defense and Ray Maluga and, and how good they have been essentially number one in almost every major statistical category. They've given up 10 points or more. Uh, they've given up more than 10 points just twice all season. What does Penn State have to do offensively in this game? Well, I think they've got to reverse the tide. I mean, again, you talked about USC's defense. They have a chance to do something that hadn't been done but five other times in the history of college football, and that's lead defensively in the three major categories that really matter. So what you look for is trends. Can Penn State reverse some of the ability for USC to generate turnovers? Can they pr produce a, a, a USC team or reduce a USC team that has a, a pr propensity to, to create turnovers and score? Can they reduce those points? So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for trends, and Penn State, uh, ability to stop those trends. If they can, it's going to be a long afternoon for them because we all know the USC can score on the offensive side of the ball, but their defense can also score. So that's a big issue to, to deal with for well, Penn State. Well, you said USC can score, but it's not like Penn State's defense is too shabby here, Spence. This is a good Nittany <laughs> Lions defense, but do they have the athletes and maybe the pressure up front to stop USC? Well, uh, Tom Bradley, their, their defensive coordinator, is a tremendous mind. Okay, he's been around a long time. One of those guys hadn't been around Penn State as long as uh, Joe Paw has, but he's a tremendous focus guy. And what he has is a group of hard hat and lunch bell kind of defensive players. Uh, Aaron Maben is one of the most uh, gifted. He's outside, a little bit uh, undersized at that defensive rush end position, but he can create turnovers. And it's all about speed with him. If he can get to the quarterback, disrupt Mark Sanchez a little bit, I think they have every reason to believe that they can stay competitive in this game at least for a half. And the longer they stay competitive, I think it's going to wake up USC and embolden uh, Penn State down the stretch. And, and talk about, uh, you know, getting something that you didn't expect. Maven wasn't even number one on the depth chart. That's right. At the, at the mm -hmm. beginning of the season. Talking about making uh, good with your chances. All right, you know, USC has had some problems this year uh, with mobile quarterbacks. And that's exactly what Daryl Clark is. Is this a game where he can succeed? Uh, I think Clark can succeed. And again, the thing for him is not turning the ball over. Remember, uh, this is a, a first year opportunity for this Penn State offense. And what I mean by that is they were not a very prolific offense last year. Uh, it, it were question marks at the quarterback position. We didn't really know how their wide receiver core was going to meld with one another. And then when Roarster came on, their running back, it really allowed them to really flourish and achieve balance uh, much, much more effectively than they did last year. And all of a sudden, you had this HD offensive package on your hands, and, and everybody was excited about it. It, as well they should be because they, they have the potential to blow games totally wide open. They can be consistent in this contest, not turn the ball over from the quarterback position. I think Clark really is the linchpin in this offensive scheme. And he'll be healthy because down the stretch of the regular season, he had that concussion and uh, hey, yep. they looked fantastic in that final game against Michigan State. What's your key to the Rose Bowl and who's your winner? The key to Rose Bowl is for a Penn State to stay in the contest as deep into it as they possibly can. If they're within a touchdown in the fourth quarter, I think that they sneak out a victory. And again, that's a total upset in the minds of most people. USC, conversely, if they get up early, Penn State, I think, is going to be a little bit disappointed in the outcome of this one. And again, all that offense and HD stuff we've been talking about, it's going to be neutralized. It's going to be a non-factor. USC 
probably would win if they stay ahead in this contest deep into the say second or third quarter. But if if it turns around and we flip the script and USC is behind or close within a touchdown, Penn State will still a victory. Yeah, USC hasn't had to come back in the, in this season. So there you go. I mean, they've been up on, on opponents and they've shut out opponents. So if they can't do that to Penn State, it's a different experience for these kids on the Trojan yep. squad. Spencer Tillman, thank you very much, sir. We look forward to uh, hearing your uh, thoughts on the rest of the BCS Bowl games and everything else here on CBSSports.com. Okay, Jason, we'll see you. All right, folks, for more on this game or others around the nation and, of course, all the bowl games, be sure to stay right here on the website. For Spencer T., I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.